بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم طبعا اطباء الكلى في كل مكان في مصر والدول العربيه الشقيقه احنا يعني بنشكر استاذنا الدكتور محمد صبح طبعا دكتور محمد صبح زي ما انتم عارفين يعني هو الاب الروحي لتخصص الكلى واستاذي ويعني وكل حاجه جميله وهو يعني غنى عن التعريف واخذ على عاتقه منذ فتره تسجيل الاكسبيرينس والخبره وكمان الكلام ما بيطلع من الدكتور صبح بيبقى حاجه ثانيه خالص. انا متاكد النهارده انه حلقه البروتونوريا احنا كلنا طبعا نفرولوجي يعني البروتونوريا ديت حاجه مهمه جدا. فاعتقد الدكتور محمد النهارده هيحط نقط على الحروف فيما يخص البروتونوريا. اتفضل يا دكتور محمد. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. أنا النهارده هتكلم عن موضوع بسيط وأساسي إنما بنقابله كتير في الكلينيكال براكتس دايما إحنا بنهتم بالحاجات السوفيستيكيتد نيو انفورميشنز وفي الزحمة بتاعة المعلومات الكتيرة دي ممكن قوي ننسى البيزكس. عشان كده النهارده حبيت اتكلم عن وان او ذا بيزك نوليدج اوف نفرولوجي او ان نفرولوجي ان هي ان بروتونوريا لان كل يوم بنقابل عيان جاي ببروتونوريا قبل ما اتكلم عن الموضوع في شويه حاجات فيسيولوجي انا حطيتها بشكل ملخص لان هي مهمه عشان نحس بالبروتونوريا مش مجرد رقم احس بيها كمشكله بتقابل الكدني. فاذا جينا نقول ان البلازما بروتين دليفري النفرون هنجد في حاجه اعجازيه جدا بالنسبه للكدني وعلاقتها بالبروتين. اذا احنا عارفين ان البلازما البروتين كونسنتريشن او بلازما تقريبا 70 جرام بير لتر وعارفين ان الرينا بلازما فلو 625 ملي لتر بير مينت. وإذا عرفنا إن اليوم فيه 24 ساعة وإذا ضربنا المينت دي في 24 ساعة هجد إن إن الكدني إيفري داي بيخشها بلاد كونتينينج تقريبا 36 كيلو جرام أوف بروتين طبعا نفس كمية البروتين بيعد ضخها للكدني بتتجمع على بعضها إن خش الكدني تقريبا 63 كيلو جرام. ازاي بقى ان كل ده بيرجع للسيركيليشن تاني؟ هنناقشه دلوقتي هنقول ان في وات اباوت رينال هاندلنج اوف ذيس هيوج امونت اوف بروتين. فبنقول ان ديسبايت دليفري اوف ميني كيلو جرامز اوف بلازما بروتين تو ذا نيفرونز ايتش داي بروتين از نورمالي بريزنت ان اونلي سمول كوانتيتيز ان يورين زي ما هنشوف بعد شويه. Why or how this occur? Due to number one, glomerular uh, uh, restricts uh, the filtration of protein. يعني بتحجمه ما تخليش البروتين فلتر من الكابيلاريز to the urinary space. And uh, tubule reabsorb most of the filtered protein. يعني شوية البروتين اللي بيفلتر بيبقى reabsorbed. باي رينا تيبيول ده السبب ان كميه ضخمه جدا من البروتين بتوصل للكدني معظمها بيرجع تاني للسيركيليشن و فيري سمول اماونت هي اللي بتسكيب تو ذا يورين لو ركزنا شويه على الجلومرولار ريستريكشن اوف بروتينوريا هنقول ان الجلومرولار كابيلاريز ار هايلي افيشنت سيفنج فلتر يعني بيسيطر على الفلتريشن كويس قوي فاحنا عارفين ان الفري ووتر تقريبا الميه الدم الميه اللي في الدم دي اللي بتوصل الكدني تقريبا في حدود 150 180 لتر بير داي ده الفري ووتر فلترد من الكابيلاري تو ذا يورينر سبيس معاها شويه انترولايتس ومعاها سوليوتس اللي هي اقل من 10000 دالتون ذيس ار فري فلترد من الكابيلاري تو يورينر سبيس في الجلومرولوس انما زي ما احنا عارفين كل ده بيبقى ري معظم ده بيبقى ري التاني 
فرينا تيبيو ريتين بات زيجل بيرون اي ريتين دي برميشن اوف ماكرو مولكيول اوف سايز ايكوال اور مور ذان ذا سايز اوف البومين يعني تقريبا واحد ونص نانومتر on the base of size, charge, shape, and deformability. I mean, all the molecules, the molecules, are smaller than 10 to 10 Dalton. They are different from the water and the electrolytes. And what is bigger than this? It will be retained and not added to the glomerular filter. So, the glomerular filter is important to know some details about it. We will say that there are things that prevent the filtration of these molecules. Why? Because there is بارير للفلتر ده البارير دي في عندنا ثلاثه باريرز مهمين جدا اللي هو الاندوسيليال سيل فينستري احنا عارفين ان الكابيلري متغطيه من جوه باندوسيليال سيل وبتبقى فيها فينستري اخرام 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 صغيره كده دي ده بارير مش اي حاجه تعدي من هذه الفينستري طيب اذا السمول سايز ده بارير ثاني حاجه حتى لو في حاجه حجمها صغير جت تعدي في نيجاتيف تشارج بيزمنت ميمبرين البيزمنت ميمبرين ده از نيجاتيف تشارج وبالتالي بيريبيل اي حاجه نيجاتيف تشارج احنا عارفين ان تايب 4 كولاجين نتورك فيلد ويز بولي انايونيك هيبرون سلفيت بروتوجلايكان يبقى اذا البيزمنت ميمبرين ماتيريال نفسها نيجاتيف تشارج فبتريبيل اي حاجه عاوزه تعدي to the urinary space. حتى لو في حاجه عدت ان الفينستري والنيجاتيف تشارج دي هتواجه من بره احنا عندنا البودوسايت والفود بروسس بتاعتها دي بتبقى نيجاتيف تشارج هي كمان زائد ان بين ان بين البودوسايت دي في سليت دافراج من برين برضه الاوبننج بتاعته من 4 ل 14 نانومتر اوبننج صغيره جدا إذا في عندنا ثلاث مستويات من الفلتريشن بيمنع إن مش أي حاجة تعدي من الكابيلاري تو ذا يورينري سبيس. وهشوف صورة بعد شوية مبينة الإندوسيليال سيل فينستري التشارج في البيزم ميمبرين والتشارج بتاعت البودوسايت والسنيت دافراج اللي هو بين البودوسايت سبابا. مش الفلتريشن بارير بس ده في إحنا عندنا كيبلر ابسوربشن حاجات اللي هي الووتر والسنيوتس والمونوكيول الصغيره دي اللي عدت بتبقى بتبقى ري ابسورب. فور اكزامبل ان تقريبا من 500000 ملي جرام اوف البومين از فلترد باي ذا جلومرولا اتش داي يت اونلي 30 ملي جرام بير داي ريتش ذا فاينل يورين. This uh, difference is absorbed by proximal uh, convoluted tubule. Uh, many low molecular weight protein, albumin, and peptides are freely filtered with water by uh, glomerulus and are similarly reabsorbed and degraded by renin tubule. They are reabsorbed, we degrade the lysosomes, the ribonuclease. Uh, The light exchange in beta 2 microglobulin and insulin as molecule, gross hormone and beta H. كل دي حاجات بتفلتر مع المية وتبقى reabsorbed في التبيون والتبيون بتعمل لها degradation. يبقى ده in barriers. الصورة دي بتبين قصة بتاعت ال barrier. ده احنا عندنا الرسم ده مبين ادى capillary human وده ال basement membrane وده ال endothelial cell from inside. وده البودوسايت بالفوتس بتاعتها. Uh, ودي صوره زيها هاي باور ماجنيفيكيشن مبينها هي ده افرنت ارتريون افرنت ارتريون ودي الكابيلاريز وده الاندوسيريال سيلز اللي جواها موجوده هنا والبودوسايت الموجوده بره دي. فنجد ان جوه اليوم ده الفلوي البلاد ويز اتس كونستيتوينت Uh, water, solutes, uh, albumin, protein, RPCs, leukocytes. Uh, uh, these are the uh, uh, fenestry between in, uh, of the endothelial cell. And this is the basement membrane with its negative charge with the albudocyte. Uh, if we look at this a little bit, we'll see something here. 
هتجد ادا انفينستري بتاعت الاندوسيين سيلز وادا بيزمن برين ماتيريال النيجاتيف تشارج بتاعته وادا فود بروسس ودا السليد دافراج الموجود اهو يبقى ده بيورينا البارييرز اجينست ان اي حاجه تفلتر من البلاد تو زيورين سبيس طيب وات اباوت ان نورمال يوريناري بروتين اكسكريشن نورمالي يوريناري بروتين اكسكريشن از ليس ذان 150 ميلي جرام بير دي توتال بروتين ان ادل اند ان تشيلدرين ليس ذان 140 ذيس از اول ذا بروتين ات از يوجوالي نوت ديتكتد باي اوردينري ميثود الديبستيك ان احنا بنستخدمها دي ما يبانش في النورمال كونديشن And it is composed of mucoprotein, and what Tom Hartz from glycoprotein, and what uromodulin. We have about 70 milligrams. Another group-related substance, about 35 milligrams. Albumin, about 30 milligrams, and immunoglobulins, and mucopolysaccharide, and other protein, hormone, enzymes, and small molecule. That normal. البروتين اكسكريشن والصوره دي شوف تجد معظم البروتين از ميوكو بروتين اللي هو تام هارسفول بروتين هتجد ان القلب من موجود اهو وده البلاد جروب ريليتد بروتين وده الامينو جلوبين زي اللايت تشينز والحاجات دي طيب احط بعض الديفينيشنز وات از ذا مينينج اوف بروتينوريا Proteinuria is a secretion of an abnormal amount of protein in urine. Uh, normal protein excretion by 24 hours in adult is less than 150 milligram, as I said before. Most of this protein is albumin and Tom Hartsfeld protein with a smaller amount of immunoglobulin. Free term, false positive proteinuria. Here I'm also a bit حط التبستيك في الاورين فريش بودي اليورين و بيتقارن بقى الكالر تشينج بالريفرنس كالر تشينج الموجوده ف فولس بوزيتيف يعني ما فيش بروتينوريا انما هيقرا بوزيتيف التبستيك امتى يحصل ده؟ وان ذا يورين از الكالاين يعني فيري كونسنتريتد اهميه ده ايه؟ وين يو سي وين يو هاف ا يورين اناليسيز ريبورت اند يو لوك فور بروتينوريا يو فايند ات positive one plus or two or three plus. يجب ان انت تبص على حاجتين. ال specific gravity لو لقيته very very concentrated او very diluted يبقى ده يديك فكره this over or under. وتشوف ال pH اذا لقيته very alkaline ده ممكن يكون false positive بالذات لو لقيت ان مثلا one plus protonuria. ففالس بوزيتيف لما يكون highly very concentrated Uh, very concentrated uh, L alkaline urea. طيب في تعبير تاني اسمه uh, false negative proteinuria يعني في proteinuria و uh, اعمل دي بستيك التها negative. Does this observed when protein excretion is mainly Benz Jones protein? And when urine is very diluted, I think that again, I will see the specific graph. If I feel that there is proteinuria, and I find that there is proteinuria, I think that the dipstick is negative. It is possible that there is a abnormal protein, such as Jones protein. I have said Jones Jones protein. This is a light chain fraction of immunoglobulin. We know that immunoglobulin is a heavy chain or light chain. ده الايت تشين ده ابير ان ابنورمال اماونت ان يورين ان كيسز اوف مالتي مايلوما فور اكزامبل انما في اذر كوز هقولها بعد شويه ذيس بينز جونز بروتين كاركترايز باي ذا فاكت ذات ات كلوت ات تمبرشر بيتوين 44 تو 55 ديجري سنتيجريد اباف اند بلو ات ديزولف Presence of Pins Jones uh, uh, proteinuria should be confirmed by immunoelectrophoresis. We uh, uh, 
The causes of Prince John's proteinuria include, as I said, multiple myeloma, amyloidosis, uh, Fanconi, adult Fanconi syndrome, benign monoclonal gammopathy, and hyperparathyroidism. Uh, what about microangiomenorrhea? Uh, uh, that, uh, it means that a secretion of, uh, in the urine of an amount of albumin that is more than the physiologic value. Normally, we have albumin less than 30 gram. In a domestic, can detect in a rate to meet milligram. Is there a fee gap? Uh, Proteinuria above physiologic limit and below the sensitivity uh, uh, test. Uh, sensitivity of the conventional clinical deep step test, this is microalbuminuria. Yeah, microalbuminuria between uh, 30 to 300 milligram per deciliter. There is, uh, uh, when this first uh, discovered, this microalbuminuria, uh, it was used as an early marker of diabetic nephropathy, but now its value uh, is beyond this. It is considered also as a marker of endothelial cell injury. Ayinama uh, can blood vessel discovered by endothelium. It means that this endothelium is damaged, is uh, under stress. So uh, in behemena, in clinical practice, is a cardiovascular problem. Uh, so and coronary or cerebral and so on. It could be used as a marker of cardiovascular risk, this microalbumin. So it is important. Uh, in the past, it was measured by radioimmunoassay, recently ELISA, and now it, uh, there are special dipstick tests which can detect uh, micro -albuminol. What is the meaning of selectivity of proteinuria? Uh, it, it does it have, still have value in clinical practice? This I'm going to say now. Uh, this test, i.e. test of selectivity of proteinuria, is done to evaluate the degree of damage in the glomerulonephrosis membrane uh, through comparing uh, the amount uh, of uh, large molecular weight protein in urine and that of another small molecular weight protein. Yani, in time that are seen in the filtration barriers, magoda, with the pores, the diaphragm, pores of that inducing sense, عشان حاجة تعدي دي طبعا بارير فمنطقي ان لو في سمول مونيكيول زي الترانسفيرين مثلا هيعدي اسهل واكتر من لارج مونيكيول زي الميلوجلوبين جي فور اكزامبل فلو انا شفت ان كليرنس اماونت وبالتالي كليرنس اوف سمول مونيكيول وكليرنس او اماونت اوف لارج مونيكيول ان يورين كل ما يكون a dominance small molecule, uh, and the care of the injury is little. Well, uh, So, uh, this is done by comparing the clearance of IgG to that of transferrin. IgG be a big molecule, transferrin be a small molecule. Now, the end value is less than 10%. Yani IgG is less than 10%. Hena, a dominant small molecule. So this proteinuria is selective. There is the injury or the tear in the pes membrane is a little small. While if it is more than 20%, it is non-selective. Selective proteinuria is usually seen in minimal change, nephritis, and we have asteroid sensor. While non-selective proteinuria is seen in other lesions, uh, such as mesangiocapillary nephritis. This test of selectivity was introduced uh, to avoid doing kidney biopsy when it was invasive. But now kidney biopsy uh, is still invasive, but uh, uh, to a great extent we can do it without harm. By the new technique, uh, uh, ultrasound or CT guided and uh, very small caliber needle, which we use now to get the uh, tissue biopsy. But this can be considered sometimes when biopsy is risky, but cannot, uh, of course, this cannot be generalized. So the rule is that we do biopsy, but if there is a contraindication for this biopsy, 
we can do test for selectivity of proteinuria to decide to know if this lesion is going to be uh, steroid sensitive or steroid resistant or resilient. Now we come to what is called orthostatic proteinuria or postural proteinuria. Actually, this is very important in clinical practice. Since sometimes we see patients coming by isolated proteinuria, and instead of sending him to a dilemma of biopsy and immune suppression, just be aware of the story of orthostatic proteinuria. Uh, orthostatic proteinuria. Uh, present in uh, uh, means that proteinuria, which is present in upright position only, and disappear with a recumbent position. Uh, and if in practice, we see in urine, uh, first urine, all mess from no. Here, the vertebral column is flat in the brain. No such effect of uh, uh, postural or uh, gravity or. Uh, 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 orthostatic effect. وقارنها بيورن سامبل ميد داي وايل ان بيشنت موفينج. So moving uh, here the uh, vertebral column this can uh, uh, the for, uh, the, will, will compress the uh, possibly will compress the renal vein causing some renal congestion. So proteinuria will appear in urine sample during the day activity and in the morning it will not be present. If you repeat this test, and you find it like this, you find it like this, this is orthostatic proteinuria, and it is benign condition. It is seen in 90% of young men presenting with isolated proteinuria. It's very important. And entirely benign, and may be transient. Actually, in my clinical practice, uh, in the last month, for example, I saw at least five cases like this. Patient coming with uh, urine analysis uh, and uh, the urine test say that you have proteinuria, so he's very anxious. He has kidney disease. And instead, since the patient looks very normal, uh, instead of going to sophisticated investigation, I send him, I ask him to do this test repeatedly. And actually, most of these people come positive for orthostatic proteinuria. So don't forget this. Uh, another term, which is persistent isolated proteinuria, this means that uh, isolated proteinuria persists in all sample tested in both recumbent and upright position. So it is persistent proteinuria. Uh, this is seen in 5 to 10% of isolated proteinuria in hemc men. Uh, almost always a sign. Uh, Uh, of structural and renal disease with some risk of progression, although prognosis is not bad uh, in all cases since it is isolated proteinuria. Isolated, I mean there is no hematuria, no hypertension, and serum creatin is normal. And if you do uh, actually a biopsy here, you will see a variety of renal condition, including uh, minimum lesions, for example. Uh, okay. So this is orthostatic, this is persistent. Another term, which is also clinical, uh, of a clinical value, which is the function of proteinuria. Uh, proteinuria uh, is associated with uh, high fever, for example, spontaneous, uh, 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 strenuous exercise, exposure to cold, emotional stress, congestive heart failure, or other acute medical diseases. In practice, you will see a patient coming by positive urine test for proteinuria and even hematuria, and he has fever. This could be simply functional, and so don't rush and send in patient for further investigation, but ask him to repeat the test while he is in good shape. And after resolution of this condition, whether it is fever or steroid exercise, or after the heart is being compensated, you will find that this proteinuria will disappear. So it was functional. This proteinuria disappeared as soon as the precipitating factor has uh, resolved it. It is glomerular in type due to change in renal hemodynamic and no progression of renal disease. So far, it is functional. Now we come to the mechanism uh, or mechanisms of proteinuria. There are four mechanisms. 
uh, either glomerular mechanism, uh, i.e. there is abnormality in permeability of glomerular plasma membrane because of glomerular disease or abnormal uh, uh, glomerular hemodynamic. And usually it is albumin. Written here is usually albumin. The second mechanism, which we call overflow peritoneuria, uh, here there is increased concentration of a small molecular weight protein, occurring in a small molecular weight protein, freely filter in the glomerular system of the abnicata, and the molecular weight beta is small, in 16, 17, alpha delta. Uh, such as hemoglobin, if we have hemoglobinuria, for example, uh, hem uh, hemolysis, for example, or myoglobinuria, if there is muscle injury. Uh, and uh, uh, immunoglobulin lighted chain, such as in patients with multiple myeloma, this, this will pass easily through the normal glomerular membrane, and we call it overflow peritonuria. The third mechanism is uh, tubular peritonuria. Uh, in this condition, tubular disease was inadequate reabsorption of normally filtered protein of molecular weight less than uh, uh, 60,000 Dalton, such as beta-2 microglobulin, they will say we have tubular peritonuria. Uh, secretion, our secretory, mean due to secretion of renal tubular cells of Tom Hartsfield protein. And I think they're normally secreted. Glycoprotein secreted by renal TPU. It have, uh, physiologically, it have very uh, important functions. Uh, if it is in excess, it will cause this secretory proteinuria. So, not all proteinuria is a glomerular release. It could be overflow, it could be chipler, or it could be secretory. But when it is albumin, usually it is glomerular. Uh, now we come to the uh, causes or differential diagnosis of proteinuria. Proteinuria could be functional, the multi abnicata, no organic change in the kidney tissue. It is usually less than one gram. It is reversible, possibly due to hemodynamic change uh, or to minor glomerular disease, which is reversible. It is among the should have strenuous exercise. I shouldn't make I should get a Mahadigan urine analysis. Let them become a ray of water. Quiesa. Fibrile patient, but I'm not sure an analysis of the iron fibrile in the case of Dorada Pyuria, for example. Orthostatic proteinuria, I am going to proteinuria isolated. Let them fucker in which can orthostatic dysfunction. Or other conditions such as cirrhosis, can have functional proteinuria, severe anemia, can have functional proteinuria, and central nervous system lesion, get angry by stroke, can have a little bit of proteinuria. Another group of causes is in which the proteinuria is from half to three point five gram per day, usually caused by tubular or tubular interstitial disease, uh, such as acute interstitial nephritis, chronic interstitial nephritis, such as bacterial pyelonephritis, gouty nephropathy, analgesic nephropathy, tubular disease, such as Fanconi syndrome, heavy metal intoxication, multiple myeloma, hypokalemic nephropathy, bone cystic kidney disease, medullary cystic disease, they are mumkin, you can have the proteinuria, بس بتبقى أقل نان نفرط برتنوريا نان نفرط كان أقل من ثلاثة ونص جرام. Third group which is usually nephrotic range برتنوريا and up to من ثلاثة جرام per day per one point seven square meter surface area. This could be due to either primary glomerular disease such as minimal change, nephritis, membranous, focal segmental. Secondary, such as poster to cocktail, uh, uh, HUS, uh, collagen disease, metabolic, such as diabetes, amyloidosis, malignancy related, drug induced, obesity. Obesity is very important. Sometimes we see patients who are morbid obese, coming by proteinuria, even edema, even I saw patient up to nephrotic range. He is morbid, morbid obese. Obesity can cause proteinuria 
and even can cause glomerular disease, cochlear segmental glomerular sclerosis, due to hyperfiltration injury in the kidney. So if you have an obese patient coming by proteinuria, especially isolated, look for bariatric surgery, or what we call now metabolic surgery. Reflux nephropathy also can cause this uh, sort of protein. Now we come to the, this depth technique is very important. We use it daily uh, for detection and uh, even sometimes follow up of proteinuria. Uh, what is the physics of these strips? Uh, albumin reagent strip test that is is based on the effect of albumin on a buffer. And if you buffer, and I think it is the plastic, or a piece of paper, less a film plastic at the end. And uh, this paper is impregnated, Mushabba, the chemical in the buffer. It's more tetra-romophenol blue. Uh, when albumin reacts with this buffer, it changes its pH. And the change in pH is proportional proportional to the concentration of albumin, where in a change at the type three it higher, uh, green, uh, from pale, green, to green, to blue, and so on. Uh, this fee, about this diabetic test, the strips are sensitive to albumin, but has a very low sensitivity to other protein, such as tubular proteinuria and light chain immunoglobulin. Thus, it will not detect tubular proteinuria or overflow proteinuria, which can occur in monoclonal gammopathy. So, I am getting in the proteinuria with stick negative. It could be false negative. Here, in hand, I have to do a protein in urine. I take it. In a protein positive, albumin negative. So you are dealing with abnormal protein such as in a patient with monoclonal gammopathy. Uh, another point, uh, moreover, the detection limit is down to 300 milligram per deciliter. After I detect it, it will come false, it will come negative. Uh, so, does not identify microalbuminuria and is influenced by hydration. You can call one is more than micro, it is macroalbuminuria in a small amount, but there is massive hydration. It will come from negative, as I said before. Uh, also, and so on. Uh, urine pH, urine pH affects this deposit. False positive result are uh, in a strongly alkaline uh, pH urine. The, this uh, reagent strip or dipstick does supply only a semi-quantitative measurement of urine albumin, which is expressed as zero or one plus or two plus or three plus. So it is semi-quantitative. What is more accurate? For screening, we do this dipstick test. But for accurate assessment, we have to do 24-hour protein excretion. The 24-hour protein excretion average the variation of proteinuria caused by circadian rhythm. يعني إحنا على مدار 24 ساعة مش في كل لحظة بنفرز نفس الكمية بتاعت البروتين in urine. بتطلع وتنزل حسب الاكتيفيتي وحسب النوم والصحيان. لما بتجمع بعد 24 ساعة بتاخد متوسط أو يعني حصيلة هذه الكمية مع بعضها. So it is more accurate to determine amount of proteinuria. So it is considered as a reference method, or you can say gold standard if you are going to if to report on proteinuria in a patient. And of course, can be used for follow up. Uh, to detect the response to treatment. The measurement of proteinuria can be done by chemical assay, which quantify total protein rather than only albumin. There are many methods for chemical quantitation of proteinuria. The commonly used is immunoturbidimetry, 
since it is it is it is simple and easy to perform in labs. However, the 24-hour urine collection can be impractical in some setting. It is difficult in the gamma for the children and outpatient patient active going uh, to his work is daily activity is difficult to collect 24 hour urine in female patient also sometimes it's difficult and in elderly also it could be difficult and it's subjected to error of over collection under collection so uh, 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 24 hour proteinuria is the gold standard but sometimes it is resilient or silly to do so we have this test protein creatinine ratio and also albumin, albumin creatinine ratio on a random urine sample. You just you need a, 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 a urine sample at any time and you, you test for protein and the creatinine and you say protein creatinine ratio or you test for albumin and the creatinine and you see albumin creatinine ratio. This protein creatinine ratio measured uh, measured on early morning urine sample represent a practical alternative to 24 hour urine uh, collection because the sample is easy to supply and is not influenced by variation in water intake or rate of diuresis. In Ayan Bishar Mayaktir, protein or albumin is a ratio septa. So, if the urine can concentrate it or dilute it, the ratio will be the same. The advantage a, a close correlation between this protein keratin ratio and a random urine sample and 24 hour protein excretion has been demonstrated in a wide range of patients. We urine sample random وقارن عمل بقى في كورينيشن بينه لا هتشوفوا بعد شوية إن كورينيشن is very good correlation. So uh, uh, we can rely on uh, protein creatinine ratio. However, the result may be influenced by reduced creatinine excretion. يعني لو في عيان excretion كرياتين طاقة ليل زي muscle mass ليلة أو بتكلم كرياتين ليل. هيبقى هنا الالبوم من هو البسط المقام قليل بالطبيعه هيبقى في اوفر اوفر استيميشن يعني لو واحد كشكتك الدرني اند ان فيميل اند يو هاف ذيس ريشيو خد بالك ان ده اوفر والعكس لو واحد ماسل ماس هيوج وبالتالي كريتين سكريشن كتير فالريشيو تبقى اندر كوريكتنج تبقى ات شود بي ان اور مايند انما في النهايه لا ينقص قيمة التست لأن تستخدمه for follow up of to 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 see the response to treatment for example for muscle mass the same إنما an albumin or protein excretion هو and the changing due to the disease and in response to treatment وده فكرة هم بينوا خد a log بتاع spot morning urine Uh, protein keratin ratio we are in a 24 hour urine protein fee linear relationship a very good correlation between both so this test is good one protein keratin ratio or album keratin ratio the kediko kediko uh, guidelines suggest albumin keratin ratio rather than protein keratin ratio as a first measurement of proteinuria in adults. Why? Because albuminuria is a marker, uh, is a reliable marker of the outcome of CKD and has been studied very much. It provides a specific and a sensitive measure of changes in the glomerular permeability in renal disease. However, false negative result of album creatine may occur with album creatine ratio, especially in tubal interstitial disease. I'm on a on a book. And the monoclonal gammopathy can be a false negative. I think that we need to do a protein creatine ratio. 
in which urine protein are mostly composed of tubular protein and monoclonal light chain, respectively. In contrary, in this case in which album curtain ratio is negative, protein keratin ratio will come high. عشان كده التو تيست should be at your hand. Normally you do album creatinine, and now you have to be backed up by protein keratin ratio if you suspect tubular proteinuria or uh, light chain nephropathy. For other setting, in a children kidoki guideline recommended recommended the measurement of protein creatin ratio rather than album creatinine ratio. Why? Because uh, the later can miss uh, the identification of congenital disorder associated with uh, non album proteinuria. And in the atfal, there is congenital anomaly, and in the tubular defects, there is proteinuria not album. They have tubular proteinuria, uh, such as uh, beta 2 microglobulin, alpha 1 uh, microglobulin, and retinol binding protein. That's why. If you do album creatinine ratio, it will come negative. But if you do protein keratin ratio, it will come positive. So there is an abnormal proteinuria. So in this condition, you have to do electrophoresis. If we come to the deep step, what is normal? Then take it in breaths. Arqam min akhbata. In tabi terifir in album keratinine. Usually we use milligram albumin to gram creatin. In the few other treatments, we use gram per gram. In the other treatments, we use milligram milligram weight or things like that. In our routine practice, usually we do milligram per gram, milligram albumin or protein to gram creatin. In this setting, the normal normally it is less than thirty. Milligram uh, albumin to uh, gram creatinine. Uh, in microalbuminuria, it is 30 to 300. In over uh, proteinuria, it is more than 300. Uh, and uh, album creatinine ratio, protein creatinine ratio, will underestimate proteinuria uh, when creatinine excretion is high such as muscular people, uh, black people, I don't want to be actor. And overestimate when, uh, underestimate when we are muscular, because the maqam is big. We overestimate when the muscle is very big, elderly, female, because the maqam is big. However, they are useful for serial monitoring in individual, in individual patients. لأن المصل إلى حد ما فيكسد على الشورت تيرم إنما البروتينوريا is changeable. If we come to the symptom and signs in a patient with proteinuria, usually proteinuria usually detected initially on routine urine analysis, unexpectedly by chance, for example, يعني أو during routine investigation. Patient may be completely asymptomatic or may have many symptoms according to the magnitude of proteinuria and or the level of renal functional disorder. In a common way, I have frosty or foamy urine. We can now with proteinuria actor, but I have the variable varying grades of edema, mild, moderate, or severe. We have nephrotic syndrome when proteinuria is more than 3.5 gram per day. We classify patients who come by edema, hypoalbuminemia, hypercholesterolemia, and so on. Besides, uh, 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 patients with glomerular nephritis, uh, can be asymptomatic, yes, and they can be with hematuria, edema, or can be pulmonary symptom, overload. ممكن يجيب هايبرتنشن ممكن يجيب مانيفستيشن او ازيكيميا او يوريميا طيب هل في كومبليكيشن ريليتد تو بروتينوريا بير سي يس البروتينوريا ويكوز هايبالبومينيميا ويكوز اديما 
will increase hepatic senses of uh, lipoprotein, cholesterol high. Uh, may increase in platelet aggregability, وبالتالي ممكن تفاجأ بDVT في حالات السفير بروتينوريا. May increase tumor uh, 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 protein reabsorption. وإذا ما نشوف ده له consequence خطيرة على التبيول ممكن تبيول دامج وانترستيشن فيبروز. ممكن يعمل تبيول ديسفانكشن. ممكن. ممكن يعمل تبيول دامج. ممكن يعمل loss of protein carrying vitamins hormones and mineral one of the cause of anemia and also protein iron binding proteins for example smoking loss of trace minerals vitamin d deficiency smoking hypocalcemia loss of immunoglobulin what we tell you the infection susceptibility to infection ممكن أشر سكيروزس و بريماتيور كورونا أرت ديزيز كارد واسكر ديز إن في عندي هايبر نيبيديميا أوتريشن إن كوجيليشن ممكن بيشن تيجي بديفيتي وشوفنا عينين ديفيتي وبالمونر إمبليز إن إماسيفلي بروتينوريك بيشن سرومب إمبليز رينا فينسلومبوزس نيجاتيف بروتين بالانس ديو تو لوس أوف بروتين إن يورين مال نوتريشن Loss of vitamin, mineral, also, also alteration in drug metabolism. If you have a mesam, for example, in Marivan or Warframe, with apertin bound, ma in hypoalbuminemia, if and free drug actor or tell him I'm bleeding, when correct hypoalbuminemia is corrected, binding will increase, so thrombosis can occur. So. This story of proteinuria and the consequent hypoalbuminemia can disturb the action <coughs> of many drugs, for example, anticoagulants. What is the relation between proteinuria and progression of CKD? Uh, persistently increased protein excretion is usually a marker of kidney damage. Good marker. Proteinuria is a good predictor of progressive kidney disease. And ممكن نيجي حتى نيجي classes CKD بنقول with or without proteinuria. With proteinuria معناها the disease more aggressive and progression will be more. غياب البروتينوريا ده معناه إن آه yes I have progression but it will be less than if we have proteinuria. The rate of decline of renal function is proportional to the severity of proteinuria. I should care about not a quantitative proteinuria. Proteinuria may cause tubular atrophy and interstitial fibrosis. If a hena, when we say hena, proteinuria is a marker of kidney damage. Hena, when we say that proteinuria is a maker of kidney damage. Transudation of protein. And proteinaceous material will, have, will cause glomerular cell proliferation and increase senses of extracellular matrix component and consequently glomerular sclerosis. Ashan kira, unta el proteinuria, unta unta btaalik glomerular disease, el proteinuria had zeta it need to be treated. So if you have a disease glomerular disease which is not treatable. You have to insist to correct proteinuria. I mean, proteinuria per se is a maker of kidney damage. What are the investigations for a patient with proteinuria? Of course, number one, when you, ha when you have proteinuria, you have to do characterization of proteinuria, especially if it is not album. After diagnosis of proteinuria by the Bistec test, it should be confirmed by quantitative Estimation of 24-hour protein. We said that the more we get into proteinuria, the more the risk for kidney damage and progression will increase. Further assessment may include electrophoresis and immunoimmunophoresis to determine the type of abnormal protein excreted. That, of course, for those who have paraproteinemia. 
give a characterization of proteinuria according to uh, regarding the amount and the type. Urine analysis, we look for pus, for example, to treat infection, RPCs, uh, if this patient is nephrotic or nephritic. Also, urine volume is a configuria or pinuria no uh, pH of urine, a specific gravity, and test for glucosuria could be tubular dysfunction causing glucosuria, or you are giving steroids so the patient became diabetic, for example. Amino acid urea and beta 2 microglobulin as an tubular uh, proteinuria. Serologic test, kidney function test, including creatinine, creatine clearance, different electrolytes, total protein, albumin, cholesterol, to diagnose nephrotic syndrome, and serologic examination, including, for example, anti-DNA complement uh, C3, C4, to look for lupus activity, for example. Radiologic assessment include examination of the kidney for its size, state of parenchyma, presence of a stone, blood pressure, bionephritic change. Uh, this is achieved by ultrasound. And ultrasound, as we know, is a routine uh, test which has to be done in every nephrologic patient. And sometimes we may need, need non-contrast CT. In investigation to discover malignancy, that this is important, especially if we have patient with nephrotic syndrome, or uh, elderly patient coming by nephrotic syndrome, uh, you have to look for, you have to do a skeletal survey, uh, looking for multi-myeloma, X-ray chest, bronchogram, bronchogram, or CT scan for bronchogenic carcinoma. And at the end, renal biopsy will give the final answer for diagnosis of kidney lesion causing proteinuria. This is the last slide, which gave the, uh, what about management? Of course, uh, proteinuria is a marker of a disease. So the management is to, disease, is to manage the disease, specific. But besides treatment of the disease, sometimes you cannot treat the disease. There are general interventions uh, regarding the management of proteinuria itself using renin angiotensin blockade, uh, aiming to decrease uh, the filter protein uh, by dilating the efferent. We know the glomerulus have an efferent, blood going to the kidney, to the glomerular capillary, and there is filtration pressure cause infiltration of this protein, and blood get out through the efferent. And the filtration pressure depends on the afferent and efferent tone. If you decrease the tone of the efferent artery by this angiotensin blockade, you will decrease the filtration pressure inside the glomerulus. So you will decrease the proteinuria. Number one. This by its proteinuria, as we said before, is damaging to the tibule, can cause even interstitial damage. Also, this angiotensin, these drugs, ARB and uh, ACE, is act on TGF beta, so it is antifibrotic. So these are general measures. We apply it, whatever the glomerular disease or the cause of proteinuria is. So treatment of the causative glomerular disease, management of proteinuria per se, and number three, treatment of the consequences of significant protein loss, such as treatment of hyperlipidemia, hypercoagulability, and this is very important. For example, you may have a patient with severe nephrotic syndrome with proteinuria, say, more than 10 grams, for example, and his serum albumin is than two, this patient is liable for DVT and pulmonary embolism. And we saw many cases like that, in which you are reluctant to give anticoagulant. Then you are faced by the patient coming by limbing due to DVT or coming by acute dyspnea due to pulmonary embolism. 
So these are consequences of heavy proteinuria. Don't forget to give anticoagulant in a patient like that. Also, in barely uh, immunologic respond, uh, look for uh, uh, infection can occur in this patient. So you have to guard against infection. And if infection occurs, you have to be aggressive in treating this infection. Also, malnutrition with its consequences. You have to look for the good nutrition for this patient. Thank you. يعني في نهاية هذا البرزنتيشن طبعا ده السهل الممتنع السهل الممتنع حضرتك يعني ما شاء الله يعني ده الأساس للبروتونوري اللي عاوز يفهم بروتونوري طبعا بكل كلمات الشكر ما يعني أنا شفت مراجع مختلفة أنا طبعا بفكر بحط طبعا أنا عندي بيزك أساسي مع المكتب الأساسي أنا عندي بحاول أنا أبجريد وإزاي بأبجريد محاضرة موجودة عندي ب أول ستيب بشوف الـ 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 الريسنت ايشوز بتاعت البوكس بشوف كاتبة ازاي الموضوع بتاعي ده وأحسن المحاضرة بعد كده بشوف مستوى تاني بشوف الليتريتشرز الجديدة في الموضوع ده ودي تبقى ستيب تالتة بحسن المقالة بتاعتي المحاضرة يعني فأكشلي أنا شفت البوتنوريا في ديفرنت سورسز لقيتها كلها إيه ميسنج بيك يعني المحاضرة دي هتجد إيه إن هي لما كل المواضيع وفي اديكتيفز كمان موجوده من مقالات. يعني باسمكم جميعا بخلص الشكر والتحيه والتقدير لاستاذنا العالم الجليل الاستاذ الدكتور محمد صبح على الفايض اللي كل اسبوع بيديه لنا ده ونتمنى ان شاء الله انه يعني يبقى معانا على طول كل اسبوع بحيث ان احنا نسجل النفرولج كله علشان نستفيد يعني نستفيد من بحر العلم اللي بي اللي يعني الدكتور صبح طبعا بيلم بيه شكرا جزيلا ونلقاكم دائما على كل خير والسلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته